Hello, my name is Chris and I'm both a river scientist and a lecturer in physical geography at UWE Bristol. Welcome to the third of a series of five mini lectures about drainage basin hydrology that are designed to help anyone studying A-level geography. Before you go any further, please make sure that you have watched the lectures that come before this one and that you have a copy of the worksheets that go along with the lectures so that you can fill them in as we go and finish with a complete set of notes for you to revise from. You can find a link to the worksheets below, as well as links to the other four lectures in this series. OK, let's get started with lecture three, describing flow output from drainage basin systems. The flow discharge of a river channel is the volume of water in meters cubed that moves through the channel every second. We can measure the flow discharge of a river by measuring how fast it's moving, which is its flow velocity in meters per second, and also its cross-sectional area in meters squared, and then multiplying them together like this. As a large armchair has a volume of about one meters cubed, when looking at a river, you can roughly estimate its discharge by thinking about how many armchairs worth of water are flowing past every second. Measurement of river discharge is done automatically and continuously at flow gauging stations on rivers like this one. The UK has around 1,500 of these flow gauging stations, which you can access information about by the National River Flow Archive. The continuous measurement of discharge from flow gauges can be used to plot a river's discharge regime in the form of an annual hydrograph. These graphs from the National River Flow Archive show the annual hydrographs for both the River Linfey in Wales and the River Wye in Buckinghamshire. You can see that the Linfey has a very variable or flashy discharge regime. There is a big difference between its high flows, known as its storm flows, and its low flows, known as its base flows. In contrast, the Y has a far more consistent or unflashy discharge regime. There is much less difference between its storm flows, its high flows, and its base flows, its low flows. We will explore the physical and human factors that cause these differences in discharge regimes in lectures four and five. A storm hydrograph, otherwise known as an event hydrograph or a flood hydrograph, is a graph of the discharge of a river before, during and following a significant rainfall event. We can see several different stages in the example storm hydrograph below. So to start with, before any rainfall event, the hydrograph displays the base flow of the river. This is the low level of discharge in the river that is supplied by groundwater flow that has been slowly moving through the bedrock of a catchment and so is not dependent on any recent rainfall event. Following a rainfall event, overland flow and through flow move quickly down the hill slopes into the river channel. This storm flow quickly increases the discharge in the river until the peak discharge is reached. The rising limb of the hydrograph shows how the discharge levels rise as the channel is filled with storm flow, with the time taken from peak rainfall to the peak discharge known as the lag time. Once the peak discharge has passed, the discharge in the river begins to fall as less and less new storm flow enters the river channel by overland flow and through flow. This decline in discharge is shown by the falling limb of the hydrograph. Once all of the storm flow from overland flow and through flow has drained away, the discharge returns back down to its base flow level as it is only being supplied by groundwater flow that comes from the hill slope bedrock.
Whilst all storm hydrographs follow the sequence that we've just gone through, their shapes can differ considerably because of differences in the relative sizes of their storm flow and base flow. Hydrographs with short lag times, steep rising limbs, and high peak discharges have high levels of storm flow and low levels of base flow, and are known as flashy or responsive catchments. Conversely, hydrographs with long lag times, gradual rising limbs, and low peak discharges have low levels of storm flow and high levels of base flow, and are known as unflashy or unresponsive catchments. The differences in the shape of storm hydrographs are caused by the same physical and human factors that cause differences in the flow regimes of catchments. These will be explored in lectures four and five. Learn more about how we can describe the flow outputs of drainage basins by completing the activity described in your worksheet. This activity makes use of the National River Flow Archive that was introduced earlier in this lecture. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope that you found it interesting. Please check out the remaining two lectures in this series using the links below.